girl Jen and today I have a makeup video for you. I am doing a kind of like an effortless glam look using all drugstore products and I am so shocked that this is like my first time doing a video like this because this tag has been around for like years and this has been on my to-do list for years but 2018 is the year where I'm just knocking everything off that list so if you'd like to see how I did this look and watch me answer questions from Twitter please keep watching. So first up, I always want to start with sunscreen. I am an advocate of sunscreen because I am terrified of wrinkles and the UV rays. And the best way to keep wrinkles at bay is prevention. And so I'm using this sunscreen by Olay. It is their Total Effect 7-in-1. It's SPF 15, so it's a really light, everyday sunscreen. I love how absorbent it is and my skin just really sits well with it. So now I'm gonna move straight into foundation. I'm using this Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation. This is also SPF 15, so we've got that extra coverage. And I am the shade Nude Beige. I really like the coverage in this cushion because I like how my skin still peeks through, but it's still really buildable. So the first question is from Bianca and she asks, any tips of staying organized with the ridiculously busy lifestyle? So I'd say the best way to stay organized is to write everything you wanna do down. So I still religiously use my happiness planner. Like I use it every single day. Like, I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right over there behind me. I use that to a T and I write down everything that I need to because I know that my mind is such a terrible office. It literally forgets so many things. So the instant I have to do something, I write it down or I'll put it on my phone. I'm also a huge advocate of using the calendar app on my phone. So it always gives me reminders of things that I need to get done. I want a little bit more coverage underneath my eyes, so I'm gonna use a holy grail of mine. This is Maybelline's Instant Age Rewind. I'm in the shade Medium, and I'm just gonna pop that underneath my eyes. It's really important for me to break down large projects. So for example, let's say I have to upload on the 23rd. I'll make sure that on my calendar, I'll have a specific day where I finish the treatment, and then I'll have a specific day where I film, and then I'll have a specific day where I'm finishing editing, and then I'll turn that into my editor and she'll put in all the you know cool graphics and the you know trimmings on it. By breaking it down into all these different days, it really helps me finish huge projects and I don't feel like I'm overwhelmed. If I don't do something when I say I'm gonna do it, it kind of ruins my entire schedule. And I don't know, I find that planning really allows me to do everything that I want to do. I think for some people, they're afraid of planning because they feel like it might constrain or constrict their life, but I find that to be the complete opposite. The more I plan things, whether it's like planning to have a self-care day, planning to have dates with friends, planning on having like a full filming day, I find that it frees me up to do everything that I truly want to do on my list. That is such a Virgo thing to say. <laughs> All right, so the base is looking really good. I'm gonna seal that in with another one of my favorites. This is Rimmel's Stay Matte Powder. And instead of using a brush, I'm gonna use this little cushion guy, and I'm just gonna pack this all in. I've noticed that when I pack it like this, I really don't stay oily, and it also keeps any wrinkles from forming, because these days, I always have like these smile lines but when I do this technique, I've noticed that it doesn't show. It doesn't crease as much, so I've been digging this. So now I'm gonna work on my brows. I'm using this product by Joa, and it is their Brow Down To Me in the shade Taupe, and this is actually gonna be available in CVS really soon, so I'm so excited for you guys to try it. I'm just gonna do kind of like a straight, gentle brow with like a small arch, so I'm just gonna go for it. All right guys, brows are finished and now I'm gonna move straight into the eyes. I'm using this palette by Wet n Wild. It is their Rose in the Air. And I think I'm gonna just go for something quite natural. I'm gonna go in with this transition shade over here and I'm just gonna pack that onto my eyelid. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm gonna do the other side. So now that we have the base, I'm gonna go in with this orangey shade right over here. Get in, get a fluffy brush, and I'm just gonna start smoking that out. Ooh. 
Oh, and by the way, I feel like I never call out my brushes, so I'm gonna do that today. This is the Pro Blending Brush by Sephora in the Large 27. But yeah, this is like my go-to blending brush. I find that whenever I make mistakes, this brush will usually save me. And now I'm gonna get like a clean uh, blending brush and I'm just gonna smoke that even more. This is the Sigma E25 blending brush. And this has no product on it. I'm just going to smoke that out and diffuse it even more. We just want like a soft brown haze for this look. I'm gonna intensify this a little more. I pray to God I don't ruin this, but I'm gonna go in for like this darker brick red color and I'm using this Urban Decay uh, brush that I got in one of the palettes. And I'm just kind of poking it where I would like it to be and then using the other side to kind of blend it out. I kind of don't want to mess this up because I'm really enjoying the way this looks. It just looks really nice and soft. So now I'm gonna go with the transition color again and I'm gonna just pop it underneath my eyes to just complete this really diffuse look. I can't forget about the inner corners, so I'm gonna go in with this champagne shade over here and I'm gonna pop that. I need to stop saying pop. I'm going to apply that right in the inner corners and this is just gonna highlight this area and make it look nice and fresh and bright-eyed. And then with that same champagne, I'm gonna place it on my brow bone. This is going very swimmingly. It's gonna go straight into mascara. I'm going to give my lashes a little pump. Okay. And now I'm gonna use this waterproof mascara from Wet n Wild. This is their Mega Slim Skinny Mascara. And I love the little wand. It is so tiny. And it's gonna really get into the nooks and crannies of my lashes. And while I'm doing this, I should answer a question. Hi, Jen. I love your content and appreciate the way you conduct yourself with so much grace and soul. Thank you. How do you maintain close-knit bonds with your family and friends that are further away while balancing constant travel and a busy work schedule? I thought this was a really great question because as you get older, it does get harder to see your friends and your family because life gets in the way. I mean, especially your friends because when you're in school, you're kind of forced to see them every single day and so it's very convenient. But when you get older, you have to make the time and effort to go and see them. And as someone who considers herself a workaholic, it's really important for me to find time for all the things that I love, which is work, family, and friends. And I think the biggest lesson for me is to never take anything personal. If someone's too busy for you at the moment, don't take it personal. Like they're going through a lot and you gotta give them their space, but just know that you will eventually see them. And when you do, don't try and have like grudges or don't be like spiteful. I think it's really important as adults to recognize that schedules come in waves and busyness comes in waves. I think with the age of technology, there are so many different ways that you can, you know, reach out to your friend, whether it is a call or a text, email, FaceTime. When I am missing a friend, I'm just really honest. I don't care about sounding needy or anything. I'm just like, hey, I really miss you. How are you? Are you free on this day? Can you, do you wanna catch up? And when we do meet, even if we haven't seen each other in like a month, it's like nothing has happened. We just pick up where we last left off and we're just excited to see each other. And I think that is what friendship is about. I mean, we're gonna live for a pretty long time and there's so many, like there's still so much time for us to be friends. So if we don't see each other every single day, it's not the end of the world. As long as, you know, we care for each other and we're gonna make time for each other, that's what matters. I finished mascara and I just want a little extra help, just a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with these Ardell Demi Wispies, which are another holy grail of mine. And I'm just gonna pop that onto my eyelids. The lashes are on, the glue is a little bit wet, so it's gonna dry down. It's okay, Cheeky. Oh man, Cheeky's right next to me and she looks so messed up. So, uh, it's kind of an off tangent, but basically, we took Cheeky to our normal groomers and they normally do like a decent job, like it's not amazing, but you know, she's clean, she's washed. But uh, this time, they, we took her in and we got a call and they said that they had nicked the back of her neck and we're like, oh my God, is she okay? They're like, yeah, she's fine. We're gonna put some antiseptic on it. She'll be fine. 
And we're like, okay, just like let us know when we can come get her. And then we get another call saying, okay, like, so Cheeky's in the vet now and she had to get two stitches on the back of her neck. Everything's fine, but you know, she had to go to sleep and you know, she now she keeps scratching the back of her neck now. And I can't put the cone on her because the cone chafes where the whole cut is, but it's just freaking annoying. Like obviously the groomers took care of the bill and everything, but it's just very, inconvenient for us and it's just very traumatic for Cheeky because she was having such a great day and she didn't expect to go to the hospital and get all drugged up but yeah they they weren't able to even finish cutting her so like half her body is shaved and the other half is like full so I'll show you a picture later but oh poor girl they have to take the stitches out in like two weeks but never going to that place ever again so definitely in the market for a new groomer so today i'm just going to skip contour i want to go straight into blush i'm using this one by ColourPop, and unfortunately i don't know the name of this palette like it's not on here at all but it is this orange one and i'm gonna grab my little blush brush and apply that to the apples of my cheeks and i know like ColourPop isn't a drugstore brand but it's so affordable that i thought that you guys wouldn't be too mad if i you know gave them a little shout out but I'm gonna put this on my cheeks. So let's move on to highlighter now. I'm using this one by Wet n Wild. It is their bronze over the rainbow highlighter. And as you can see, there's like a bunch of little strips on there, but I'm just gonna focus my brush just on these three here. Cause I just want the lightest colors. And while I do that, I will answer another question. I guess this will be the final one. Do you have any advice for introverts who are just trying to make friends in a world full of extroverts? So I wanted to highlight this question because I actually think that the world is more full of introverts. Like the more I you know, live my life and I meet more people, the more I realize that people like to categorize themselves as introverts because I don't know, like even the people with like the loudest personalities and are always like, you know, telling the funny stories, they have like social anxiety and they need like a day or two to recover. So I think understanding that you don't need to be an extrovert to be interesting is really important. And I also think that, you know, being shy and being like the classic textbook introvert is really beautiful because I feel like the world needs a lot more listeners because these days I feel like a lot of people are just like talking at each other, you know, bombarding them with different facts and stuff. but. Personally, I, I really prefer to listen. I would categorize myself as an ambivert, meaning that, you know, I swing both ways, but it's true. There are some days where I feel extroverted and I feel pumped up from being around a lot of people and I just feel amazing. But like 70% of the time after like a big event or after just constantly talking, I need like a day to just kind of shut away and not be around anybody. But regardless, I think being an introvert is a beautiful thing because uh, you can make a lot more friends just by being interested in someone rather than being interesting. Like personally, I love when communication is like a two-way street and it really means a lot to me when someone listens to me. It takes a lot for me to, to speak up. And I don't know why that is, but I guess I've just always naturally been kind of shy. Like it took me a long time to get this far and I've been working at it. But to answer your question, I think that you can absolutely make a bunch of friends while being introverted. I think you just need to start creating kind of like an arsenal of questions you can ask people because that's what I do. I mean, I feel like that's like my social defense mechanism. Whenever I feel really anxious about meeting new people, I literally just like, ask them a bunch of questions, whether it be like, where are you from? Uh, tell me about your hometown. Uh, what did you do today? Um, sometimes if I see their Insta story, I'll be like, oh my gosh, like what happened with so-and-so? So yeah, I think just start off by creating like three or four questions that you would just naturally like to ask people. And at first it's gonna feel very odd. Like, you know, you're gonna ask questions like, what's your favorite color? Uh, but I think as you continue to do it and you practice, it's gonna be something that comes more naturally to you. So I'm gonna finish this off with the lip color. I'm using this one by Maybelline. It is their Superstay Matte Ink. All right guys, this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would call this look kind of like an effortlessly glam look for the summer, whatever you want to call it, but it was super easy to do. And I love that you could just get all these items at the drugstore. If you would like for me to do more makeup tutorials, please let me know what types of makeup looks you'd like to see in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. It would mean a lot to me. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.